Highest DJ. Metal detecting, simplified for newcomers. Exceptional stability in salt water. Waterproof up to 16 feet. Impressive depth and discrimination, similar to a high-end detector. All for an unbeatable price. Score, multi-frequency for all.
it, it's Thursday, it's eight o'clock, and it's the big detection show. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, Adrian. Happy New Year, happy New Year, everyone, and um, happy New Year to you, dear. And sorry we weren't on last week, but we had lots on. I did anyway. <laughs> Everything seemed to have gone me, and you were going to be left with just me. And I thought, well, you could I, have done I talk it. at the best of times as it is, but uh, certainly without anybody else. So, uh, yes, we cancelled more or less last minute, but uh, we've got the last week's guest on with us uh, in the back room as we speak. And Adrian is here, and I'm here. And you're here, which is the most important thing. Yes, thank you. And hopefully it's going to be a good 2024 with loads of good finds. More metal detectors, more pinpointers, all the gear, no idea. And um, the competition, update on that, um, the winners came back to us, um, emailed us, and, well, we emailed them, they came back. Some people haven't come back, so if you haven't, uh, your name is on the Big Detecting Show website dot com, Big Detecting Show website dot com, and there you there's a button to contact us. Don't try and pretend you're someone because we've got the original email addresses and IP or whatever. <clears throat> but yes, so hopefully those who have started getting some of their gifts, um, I know the books are going out tomorrow. And we have one person who's got his routers, Gary, haven't we, Dave? He's yes, very happy he with it. Pitches and thanked, uh, thanked us and, and Tony and Reuters for that. Yes, thank you, Tony. TC to Tex. Um, he's looking and I'll be to honest, and you'll be honest, we've been that busy over Christmas, New Year, and you've been poorly. I've had loads of other things going on that personally I've not even got round to, uh, to packing them up yet. But they will. You have my... <laughs> New year, new me. So, uh, Gareth, yes. Well, uh, hi, Gareth, and hello, everyone else, and Stephen Brame and Michael James Gardner. Gareth, did you get your small parcel from us? We sent you a little miniature gift thing for using your mum's loft for the show. Um, hopefully, you did, because uh, we'll find out. Anyway, Dave's got a monkey, and no, he sent me the picture. Monkey. Spank. It's a his what? Name's Spank. His name's Spank. Oh, what? What? It's a little monkey you found, didn't you, when you went out detecting last week? Spank the monkey, his name is. Oh, gosh. How oh, uncouth, vulgar. It's a little bronze statue. How cool is he? Very, very nice. Um, that was the end of the day. Me, Steve, and Sh uh, Sean. Shane went out on Sunday. That was the end of the day until Steve got home and cleaned his bag out. You know, your tots have. that you throw in the bottom of your bag. Yeah, he decided to clean it out when he got home and then got an ampler out. Oh. So he got some of them. My son found a. Uh one and a half hammers in my uh, back garden the other day. Joking. He Not dropped them. Little detecting. I don't know where they come from. Well, I've obviously dropped them. But he went, Dad, found a hammer in the garden. And it was like nine o'clock at night and we've been drinking. I said, what are you doing? And uh, he went, no, it was on the, on the ground, on the path. So I don't know what happened, clearing out over Christmas. Um, old Gareth, yes, he has got it. Uh, yeah, good. That's no worries. Oh, Gary Rayner's uh, in the chat. Um, oh, and he's ordered his routeless wireless headphones. Um, They've arrived today. Yeah, I presume you've got those from Detechnics. And you're more than welcome, Gareth. I've got absolutely no idea what was in said mystery box. It's that much of a mystery. There were some good things in there. I don't think there's anything. There was a pair of socks, which was a bit random. <laughs> what the socks in? <laughs> The Vanquish socks. Well, Mine had Vanquish oh, right. socks. Not, not just a pair that you took off and put in the box. Not the, No, not the ones I keep Or a pair of the in. housing managers or anything like that. No, but um, if you think you won, but you're not sure, go to bigdetectingshow.com and on there is a list of who won and those who haven't claimed their prizes. Those who didn't claim, it's probably because they've got Hotmail accounts and Yahoo, which put everything in the spam. So we've had trouble with that. 
Oh, Gary, yes, it was to Technics. Ah, yeah. uh, Gareth said you had art, art magazines in it. Well, I sort of made them. Mm. I drawn them. Adrian, yes. At the start of the show, what were you reading? Well, it's going to get a bit geeky tonight, and I was actually um, reading about coils um, in this fantastic. What, what type book. of coils? Oh, metal detecting coils, right? Yeah. For that, I thought this you were going down that route. Is, again. If you want to understand how a metal detector really works, right? It's proper. Decal. Most people find it really boring, but it's got loads of technical stuff, and um, you'd love it, Dave. But it gives you all or, the circuit or boards. We could just ask you. Yeah, you could do. Um, but it's, it's like a bit old fashioned, but it basically tell, says how metal detectors are made. This book is very expensive, and I got it quite cheap. And you, I don't think they printed it anymore. But it, it's going to get a bit technical tonight. So I thought I'd sort of. Um, Before it gets technical, it's going to get archaeological. Yes. At the start it of the show, I was yes. reading Beneath Our Feet which has been put together by Ken Cunliffe, and it's uh, it's volume two. All the money from volume one and two are going directly to charity. Uh, Ken on Facebook is The Detectorist, detectorist.com. Um, people from all over the world. I'm in such esteemed company as Jason Jones, Lisa Jones, and Sid Perry. And, and then, <laughs> obviously, I'm flick I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished. The person on the page behind me is called. Oh, where's it gone? I had a little chuck chuckle at his name because it made it was Ace. Where's it gone? Oh, well, there I am. So it was uh, Dwight Colon. And then I, I, again, I opened it and I can't believe that I'm in a book with such an. I don't know. He's the, he's the pinnacle of the community, and to be alongside John Bradbury in a book like this is just I've I've, I've reached Havana. No, not Havana. Somewhere else. I've reached there. Just yeah. yeah anyway, moving on. And um, sorry, uh, Tony Kayward said, "What's the book called? It's called Metal Detector." Inside, inside the metal detector. it's called Inside the Metal Detector. Yeah. And beneath our feet, volume two. Anyway, let's bring on tonight's oh. guest because we've got a lot to talk about. Glad <clears throat> to have him back on the show again because uh, he, he he does speak a lot of sense. Uh, I've had the, an article that published on the magazine by him a while ago about Treasure Trove in Scotland that was very, very interesting read. Uh, Dwight Colon is a Nocta Nomad. Mr. Colon. Mr. Cola. I won't go with that joke. I was about to do that because it's way before nine o'clock. <laughs> Boys brothers called Sammy. <laughs> Hi Tom, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? No, I'm all right. You're right, Tom? Feeling yeah, a little bit giddy. It might be tired of I don't know. I'm impressed that you've started the show with talking about spanking the monkey and colons already. And, yes. and semicolons. Well, and semicolons. <laughs> yes, yes, I didn't think but so. He's got a brother. Mm. He's got a semi. So I think last time, Adrian, you were in some sort of Mediterranean island when we did this. That was the show when you bombed in the pool at the end of the show, Adrian, that went viral. In Cyprus. That's the fella. Close enough. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, yes. It was last time you came. I saw you. Well, Rodney Cook, you came yeah. out with us, didn't you, in the buggy? Um, and I got told off um, <laughs> for taking half of the uh, country um, with me. I had a bit of trouble reversing, didn't I, Tom? In that, um, yeah. And I took about 40 foot of shrubs with me. Did you hear about that, Dave? No, I've just read what Gareth Howard wrote. <laughs> I reckon my mum must have had a coil fitted as well, Jim. I saw her trying to retrieve it with a pinpoint. God. 
Ah, oh, it's going to be one of them days. Sorry, Tom. Ah, oh, dear. Um, yes, it was. It was a. It was a. Um, a good show, and that's that's um, that year, that last year. But um, I think I had internet problems. But Rodney Cook, um, you've just been on a hell of a journey, haven't you, Tom? I don't know if you want to tell us about that. Yeah, I think I think by the time Steve and I arrived at Rodney Cook, I think we're on the sort of end of week three of being all over the place. So we'd um, we'd headed south. I think we started at the Joan Allen event down in uh, the heart of Kent Rally. Um, again, another event. There was a big horde of Bronze Age axes came up there, and then we sort of bounced around. Um, we went to Suffolk and we stayed in Suffolk for a while. Went to a permission that we've got there, um, and then we moved there again. And then we finished at Rodney Cook with you guys. So by the time we got there and you offered to uh, drive us around in the buggy, I was more than happy with that because we were, we were getting quite tired. But to be honest, at Rodney Cook, I spent most of my time in the bar than I did actually detecting. Yes, and you did have a little sleep one on the afternoon, I remember. All lies. Um, I don't know who <laughs> said that. that. I disappeared in the afternoon and had a little snooze and then came back out. It's not true. Yeah, I saw you come out of your tent. I think you were cleaning your pinpointer, so you were still uh, doing detecting stuff. Yeah, um, it was a pin tent, wasn't it? Yeah, and I just pinpointer I've never seen before. It was different, no. different tip on it and different handle, but um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, we, we could talk about that. But you're here tonight to tell us about something you've unearthed, I understand. Yeah. Um, so for those that don't know, we're, we're renovating, um, not this, although I've not finished this house yet, to be honest, but we're renovating another house um, in a place called Berghead where there's a Pictish fort there. Um, and it's one of the largest Pictish forts in Scotland. And there's been a huge amount of research done with it. And there's each year there's digs. Now, the little cottage isn't too far from there, um, and I'm taking it right back. So I've got it back to the bare walls, the floor's up, it's down to the earth. Um, and so when I lifted the first of the floorboards, um, the first thing I saw was a fragment of um, what the archers are saying is a Neolithic flint knife. Along with that was, as you see now, so many bones, just a huge amount of no, animal bones, I must add, um, that have been butchered, along with a massive amount of seashells um so i started sending some pictures of what i was seeing to an archaeolo archaeologist friend of mine who then sent them off to professor gordon noble who heads up all these digs he's been on digging for britain with alice roberts and written several books so he was really interested because they don't often get the chance to dig outside of where the fort is um so they've been in and spent a bit of time excavating under the house i think it is it's the first time they've actually done a, a dig inside a house, well, what's left of it. Um, so, yeah, it's been quite an interesting time. Yes, um, quite a few artefacts there. Um, what did they? Um, how long were they at your house for? We spent the day there. Um, they're potentially coming back to do the garden um, at some point. And then they were going off to look at another house that was kind of in the same sort of state as mine. So they were trying to kill two, two birds with one stone. And what they're trying to work out is how far back the ramparts, the original ramparts of the fort actually sort of extended into the town. Um, because back in the 1800s, when the town was originally built as we see it today, um, they flattened a lot of the ramparts to build the houses. And they didn't really care And when they built the harbour, because it's like a, a finger of land that goes out into the sea. So it's so, three-sided by the sea um so they're interested to see what's going on so yeah there's a lot going on um it's ultimately going to be an airbnb and they were asking when it's going to be finished because they come back each august to do two or three weeks of dig so i think they're actually hoping to rent it off me to uh to stay there when they come back which will be which will be good so yeah. what's what's this we're looking at at the minute tom sorry what's this we're looking at at the minute we're not sure um it it looks like I th originally we thought it was a tooth, but it's a claw from something. Um, mm. so we're going to find out what it is. So you can see the length of it now. It's sort of four centimeters long. So it's not like a domestic cat or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that was one of the finds. The photos that you've got are just a small selection of there's bucketfuls of stuff come up from under the floors. So yeah, and this is under the floors. Yeah, I've got to put it all back together at some point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you? Did you? Um, what was the first thing that you saw? You found 
Um, was the little Neolithic fragment of Neolithic knife. Uh, originally, I thought it was an arrowhead. Um, that's a huge piece of bone that we think possibly has come from a whale. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, it was massive. That was actually in the garden because the garden, when, I, when we cleared the garden, because you couldn't get into it, um, we spent like a weekend just, the place had been derelict for many years, getting access into the garden. That was one of the first things I found, along with lots of other bits of bone. So I was kind of itching to get under the floor of the house to see what was there. Um, didn't really think that we'd find the amount of things that we have, to be honest. So it's been it's been uh, quite interesting. There's still more work to do there in terms of them seeing what's going on. Um, a little bit of me was thinking, I hope they don't find anything too spe So there's the archaeologists in there doing their thing. I was a bit disappointed, though, because I know he's done TV work with uh, Professor Alice Roberts, and I was kind of hoping that she'd come along, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Bet your wife was pleased she didn't. Um, is it? Is your wife pleased now? Because you, you, it's delayed it a bit, I presume, isn't it? Um, not, to be honest, no. So most of the work to the house I'm doing myself. Um, but on the outside, it's a sandstone building, so we've got stonemasons in doing some work, um, and there's builders as we at the moment in doing some work to sort of lintels and things like that. So it hasn't really held it up because until they've sort of wrapped up and done their bit um i can't get in and carry on putting the inside back together basically so it's not really held us up at all to be fair yeah. it's probably done you a favor i'm digging down like they're doing so you can do anything that you might want to do in that area yourself they've dug yeah. it up <laughs> it did used to actually look like a normal house until i got my hands on it but um, <laughs> you, could, you could have lived in it but it, it's going right back to to the walls you can see that it's going to be properly that's an interesting feature so yeah so that extended under that um that joist there and we we tracked it back and originally thought it was a grave um and as they dug down into it it wasn't that deep so the conclusion was that it was built this house has gone through s sort of three stages it was originally a little single story house um cottage it was then it fell into a state of disrepair and this has come from the stonemasons as well because these guys are some of the best in scotland that are working on it they work on all the castles and um, that sort of thing it was then made into a two-story house but what you think is that was a hearth from one of the medieval um houses so where that house is used to be a medieval village so they think potentially because there was a lot of burning down there that had been a, a hearth place from one of the medieval houses wow and oh there is photos. Um, we found several post holes as well. So there must have been some real earlier properties mm. in there as well. So there's a big mishmash of dates in there that they're trying to work out. So from Neolithic right up to medieval, up to so there's some. Uh, no, that's the edge of the, the hearth that they thought was a grave. Um, one of the photos you'll see, there's like a one of several post holes that they found in there as well. So, that's that, so yeah, it's. Uh, a lot going on under the floor of that little place. And is this just one room, or have you looked throughout and found similar? Um, no, every room. So it's not a huge place, but every room had bone. It had seashells, so like an almost like a midden, um, and then some later sort of eleventh, twelfth century greenware pottery and things as well. And that that's just a, a handful of the bucket full of it we pulled out. In there, there was a lot of more modern stuff. So there's like Georgian and Victorian, as you'd expect, sort of um, scraps in there as well. But I don't think I sent you the picture of the little freaky doll I found in there. So that's the part of the, the flint knife that was in there as well. That's awesome. So, yeah, it was, um, it's been interesting. <laughs> oh, we're on to some different you things. You found them under there. You found them under there. Yeah, there was a there was a Quest B80 and an X Terror under the floor. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll come back to that later, shall we? When um, you say doll's freaky head, what what? No, a little doll. Um, I thought I'd send you a picture, but I've obviously I'm it's a little. It's on my social media. You'll see it. Some creepy little porcelain doll thing that was under there. Um, I didn't know what it was to be honest. Um, someone else said it was it's some form of Victorian doll that had no arms on it. It was a bit weird. So I wasn't sure whether I'd just put it back under the floor and leave it. But um, Yeah, so I would. There's a big collection of things come up. And when I was ripping back all the walls, behind the panelling was like what we think into the sandstone wall was an old meat locker. So ultimately, when the house goes back together, because it's going to be quite a modern finish, 
that's going to be, have double glazing and down lighters in it and all the artifacts are going to stay inside with the original plaster behind it so none of the coal will seep through because it'll be all double glazed so you'll be able to see what the original wall looked like along with all the artifacts from neolithic through medieval it'll be in be in the little uh in the little museum display what a lovely airbnb that will be yeah it? it's in a stunning place so it for everything from if you're into history you're right by the fort um it's a hugely historic area anyway you've got the sea um the forest the mountains it's pretty much everything and then there it is oh. Peaky little thing Oh, is there? Yeah, uh, it's very it, chubby. The face. Just, oh, Sorry, someone I told you what about me, I, then, mate. I can't remember what you said it was, but it's a type of doll. Apparently, they used to come in little coffins when you when the kids bought them. Donna Martin said the frozen Charlotte. That's it. Oh, oh I've heard of those. I've heard the frozen shoulders. Weird little thing. Uh, I'm happy finding bones. I don't want little creepy dolls under the floor. Apparently, Adrian, um, you found a freaky doll in Spencer's field and started playing with it. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think it was a couple of years ago. We were detecting and there was a little bit of green waste. And there was you're, a doll. You are you keep covering your microphone, by the way. Oh, sorry. Um, there was, you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. There was a, a doll and... Um, I think it obviously had some metal in it and detector picked it up and uh, James says I was playing with it. It was only about that big. Um, and do you know what's really weird, actually, about that doll? It was in Essex, in the countryside, in a very quiet little village. And this village has got a sign. I won't say the name of it because people probably go down there. It's got a sign that the villagers have actually made themselves saying the name of the village. And it's been put up sort of quarter of a mile outside the village. So it's not a council sign. Someone's made it. And the next week we went there, someone had pulled the head off the doll, because I'd obviously left it in the field, and super glued it to the top of the sign. I've got a picture. It's on my Instagram. And I, I just... I, James pulled that. Covered your microphone. I think... I don't know what's going on there. You keep, you, you keep going. Oh dear. Um I'll put another one in. Um but yeah, someone had pulled the head off the doll and super glued it on the village sign. And and then it, it was there for a few months and now it's gone. But yeah, a bit weird. <coughs> um Tom, Tom, did off. you Tom, did you um run your pinpointer or anything over the ground? Yeah, of course. Um so I ran I had the pinpointer in there and then I had the um I think it was the manticore, I can't remember which, but I ran that in there. But no, there's nothing Metallic wise, there was nothing under there other than like bits of old pipe and rusty old nails. But nothing. I was sort of hoping that some coins or something might have fallen through the floor over the years, but no, yeah. not that I found. So yeah, that was one of the first things I did. And the garden. As soon as the garden was cleared, I went over the garden and had a quick look. So but that'll get landscaped at some point. So once it's all scraped out, I'll go over it again and have a look. So, you actually said to me, didn't you, that you you actually can't do anything without finding history it just seems to be whatever i do wherever i go something yeah i'm tripping over it so um it's not a bad thing i'm quite happy with that but yeah it's uh even this house here we've found a huge amount of stuff um around the garden and things it's quite a big garden um and one of the first things i did was metal detect that and i've been over it with pretty much every machine that i have i think so I'm always finding something actually starting tomorrow i'm just about to dig up the driveway um and lay a new driveway so as soon as that's graded back i'll be uh i'll be going over that and i'll see what's under there cool oh, wow well i found a medieval purse bar and a bishop's gate london token oh, lovely. um and some uh 303 cases in my front garden mm. in lockdown um it's not a huge front garden it's like i don't know 60 foot i, I found a dead pigeon <laughs> you found a dead pigeon yeah. but yeah i i um, yeah, I detected my front, my back garden. I think I've got an Anderson shelter that's been buried because um, of a <laughs> massive light signal. But I've weirdly got massive EMI since the summer this year. So I think something's been put up around me. Um, or something. Yeah, it's and it's 
obviously with like the dais and the manticore you can cancel it out you know yeah. but it's still there and i've got the routers first uh, and that shows you the emi and it is i've had that for what a year and uh -huh. that was like that and now it's it, well it was sort of like that the graph and now it's like that and i'm i'm i don't like it you hear of all these things about electromagnetic fields and things uh -huh. um but yeah it's crazy around here now I, I i used to be able to go in the front garden and play with my detector in the summer you know yeah. just you get a new one you look at play with the programs because indoors it's noisy yeah. and now yeah. it's as bad indoors as it is outside so yeah a bit dodgy really yeah. <clears throat> i'm not sorry dave that's okay i was listening i was thinking because we we went out to the weekend and um first sight we went on next to a church was was fine quieter than i expected but it was it was well it was moist as well wasn't it so we didn't last too long but the second site we went on a friend's farm uh all three of us we we gave up after a while uh shane and steve were using the dais 2 and i had the um nox 800 and the the chirping and what have you that was going on was stupid all three of us were having ei emi issues all the way so we ended up going to another place in Tyler where the grass was a bit long, but we were still finding stuff. Was that on multi-frequency and single frequency? Yes, yes. And I was going through all the frequencies just to try it, and it was still there. Because mm. I actually asked him when I got to, um, when I seen him later on, what is um, electricity bills are like, are they overly high? And he said, no, why? I said, because you... To me, it's the, you're leaching uh, electricity somewhere. Look at me now in the correct terms. Well, it could be that, that's, it, that's it. My technical uh, chat tonight, by the way. Yeah, I don't. I don't often have a problem. You know, you've got the over overhead electric mm. and uh, electric fences, but um, built up areas. I don't know. It's everything's like five G now, isn't it? That is a bit of it, and. Uh, the, uh, with the 900 and the Manticore seems to be a lot more settled around EMI than the 800 is. The EMI mm. will be, sort of, uh, the 800 will be chirping and popping away, whereas the Manticore and the 900 seem a bit more sort of settled in, mm. in the same areas, which is which is handy. But uh, to be honest, up here where I do the majority of digging, it's not too bad for that. No. So no. Quite I just realised today, uh, I saw you another time last year. I'm in the middle of a field up on the the Lake District up in the hills, and you appeared in front of me in your car. I'm like, that's Tom. <laughs> yeah, so I can't remember where I've been. I th you were on your way back from family down south. Ah, uh, yeah, back so I'd, your been, way to Scotland. I'd, I'd been down in Sedbury, not far from where you were. Um, and Steve and Raymond and a few of the guys from my group were down there, so um, I swung in by. I think I was asking you if you if you knew where they were actually i'd seen yeah. them because i was trying to get up and do a bit of digging there because i think it's one of james's digs wasn't it that's right yeah yeah was um but i didn't i didn't have time but then later that year when we were down in cumbria because i got quite a few permissions in cumbria um james came up and spent the day with us digging so i think it was nice for him because he's always trying to organize events and lay land on for other people so yeah we gave him a shout to come up he actually I didn't find much that day, but he got a beautiful um, Roman fibula up that day as well. So, yeah. Roman fibula, Adrian. Now, you had a bit more news uh, end of last year to share as well. Uh, you sported the T-shirt as well. So, oh yeah. Where, uh, are, where are we with Steve with uh, Detective Wear UK now? So, yeah, it's, it's coming on quite a bit. Um, like we said, it was going to happen. It's growing. Um, there's new machines now. There's, um, I'm not sure if it's been picked up yet. There's an embroidery machine coming as well now, uh, opposed to just the, the printing. Um, and then, because I'm sort of bouncing between two phases, two properties, extend and doing things, um, once the new sort of building's in, then it's going to move into there and it'll be a much bigger space. And with that bigger space means we can 
do more and produce more um, a, a better rate um, and it'll be a bit easier going as well so steve's a sort of whiz kid that does all the the art side of it and um the actual design and things so he's always got great ideas so yeah there's a lot happening that i think there's going to be some other th other brands and types of things coming out from it quite soon as well so yeah it's ever evolving um and it's something that just seems to be seems to be growing that people are always after things and there's a lot of new different style of merchandise coming out it's gonna be a lot of laser cut stuff and things and uh yeah watch this space there's gonna be uh quite a bit i haven't done a huge amount of media about it yet purely because one because we're both a bit detached at the moment um so we're not in the same place and two i've just been so busy sort of doing everything else um so this year there's gonna be a lot more coming and there's gonna be sort of weekly updates on what we're up to and people can sort of follow along on Instagram and that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, a lot more to come from uh, Detective Certainly looking forward to it because we've, we've supported Steve from the, the first day we – I think it was Tony Caywood who actually introduced us to Steve, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, yeah, it was. We've, we've been a, um, a big supporter and advocate of, of himself and the all the things that he does in the way. I mean, I, I've, spoke, I've, I've messaged him and said, any chance you could knock me up this T-shirt several yeah. occasions – and he's designed artwork for one-offs for me for people for Christmas. So yeah. you know, I can't yeah, speak highly enough of the, the quality either. Yeah, and I think no. that's what, so the bigger companies that you can find online that do a similar sort of thing, there's often a minimum order with them, um, whereas Detecting Wear UK will do like, individual items or into the sort of, uh, container load. It, it just depends on what the requirements are. So we're speaking at, at the moment actually with um, two of the big um so main manufacturers of metal detectors um who are quite interested in buying their sort of uk merchandise from us as well so yeah. there's quite a bit going Doct on dr otec and c scope yeah That's it. um <laughs> and those who don't know um the web address is for detecting where tom uh, you yeah, know it uh you, know, you put me on the spot not off top oh, of just head. google UK. detecting just put in Detecting My UK and it'll come to the top of the Google search. Um, or you can yeah. get it on Facebook or you can get it on Instagram. All all of them will link you back to the shop. Mm. There's some really cool stuff on there. And I, yeah, you know, years ago, I brought some T-shirts on there because I'm, I'm, I'm not a Nike or Adidas person. I'd rather wear sort of Dane Breed Metal Detecting Club T-shirt, um, <clears throat> which I think I did. We, we've even got well. the Steve. Uh, I think we were actually one of the initial uh things on there we uh, there was about two other people before ourselves rkmd yeah. mag and uh yeah. big detecting show but uh from from day one he's had that on there and i've no idea how it gets on if he sells anything because the agreement was do us a favor mate put that on and he did and yeah so there's a few people doing want any it, money out of it um for those <clears> that don't, we're talking about so basically you can have your merchandise um on the detecting my uk shop um at, at no charge um and the, basically what happens is they buy from us as opposed to then if you own a club you have to buy in a load of merch and potentially not sell it so you can sell your merch via the shop um and it seems quite popular there's a lot, a lot of people doing it so mm. uh, and the website's gonna change it, well it's in the process of changing at the moment as well it's getting a bit of a revamp and um modernized a little bit so um yeah there's just so much work to do with it it's it's kind of uh, another an evolving project that just sort of keeps growing and you find what works and what doesn't and just keep sort of pushing on with it so plus uh, converting two houses digging up your driveway and metal <laughs> detecting um sorry we've got some questions in the chat dave um well uh, donna martin where is the like button on live she's on her phone um on live on facebook or youtube she's on youtube absolutely no idea that yeah, it's, to it's use just it. a little thumb isn't it isn't it yeah no um, idea how to use it. um rob random hello rob hope you're okay mate thank you just wish just a happy new year um dig a dawn wears some nice gear donna jim you pervert um he's i know what he's looking at that jim um, painting having to listen on silent can captions are good fun day as two manti course manti course <laughs> <laughs> no worries um 
yeah, it's great selling model. Uh, hi, Derek. Um, rather than clubs holding stock, yeah, it is. It's no it is, especially when you go and get like 500 debris metal detecting fleeces printed. You can't <laughs> yeah. sell them. And the thing I, is, I, I, a lot of the clubs are sort of non for profit and can't really afford to be have an outlay for lots of items. But um, the way we do it is you can have them sat there and you, you can have your brand go out there and people can wear that. You, their merch if you want them to but they don't have the initial outlay so um it, it seems to be popular it's working i think also getting an embroidery machine is key because we all know embroidery products they're not cheap but they no. last ages absolute ages so um i think that'll be really really good um i've i personally want to get a picture of dave eating cake metal detecting on a t-shirt embroidered so I can wear it for the rest of my life. I might even wear it in bed, actually. Um, I don't oh, think the housing manager would be best pleased with that, wearing a jacket in bed. Not not the me bit, just the jacket. No, probably Maybe not. Maybe you could put no. it over the arm of the chair in your bedroom, sort of facing you. Have you. Actually, funny question, Tom. Have you got a chair in your bedroom that has clothes on it? No, but there is like a set of cubes thing that's got towels and blankets and that in it and that's normally always got my clothes dumped on top of it not like folds yeah. or anything but chucked on it dave dave do you have a chair with clothes on i've, I've got a floor <laughs> it's a, i think it's an english thing we all have chairs in bedrooms with like or like or dave has a chaise lounge don't you you've got a chaise lounge um, <laughs> um oh keith ellis hi keith um Keith won a prize, didn't he? he won if a you prize, was asked to house it for a friend with amazing history, would you be tempted to have a cheeky detect? Of course, <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't think anybody would trust us to house it, to be honest, would they? I've actually... Or, or Airbnb. I don't know if I should say... Well, I've actually... I mean, talking to someone at the moment whose friend owns a house that has got a lot of secret history and i can't go any more detail on that um sort of it's quite interesting something was set up there uh about 100 years ago and um no not 100 years ago around sort of second world war time like a and, scale uh, or something. no no um and i'm looking forward to going there um, I've got a new talking, commission. We're talking Sorry. SOE type stuff, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking so, what? Uh, SOE type. Don't tell him. Google it, Dave. Google it. Sausages and eggs. It's like a secret thing. Um, the chair is up there in the rankings alongside the redundant exercise bike wardrobe. Yeah, <laughs> My exercise favorite. bikes make a good clothes horse. Oh. Nick West's got a sofa in his bedroom. Oh, all right, if you can do right, it. Right, I'm Googling uh, sausage and eggs, and I've got lots of pictures no, of sausages I, I, and <laughs> eggs. No. Now I, no, I actually want sausages and scrambled eggs. Yeah, but you were in the army, Dave, weren't you? You should not, Oh, no, it's Salvation. Yeah, no, no, I was, I was in the army. I was in um, the Congo. Salvation. Boys Brigade. Um, I used to drink Umbongo a lot. That's where I got the... You know, when I keep coming, having that... that Tropical disease keeps coming back. That's when I oh. the reunited thing from the Congo. Um, Derek Gibbons' uncle was SOE. Wow, interesting. Oh, wow. Um, uh, Robert MacGyver. If we're going to say dad, Robert Mugabe then. Uh, my mum and dad live on an old farmhouse. They went away for a few days first. I think I was ah. taken by a detector. Um, ah, Donna Martin's got a closed chair. Um, Stephen Law's got a wardrobe that, sorry, is completely going. Oh, John, we all, we oh always do, hi, John. We always go. Off hi, John. Filter. Yes, talking about chairs in bedrooms. I don't know how my brain works. Anyway, time's getting on. Um, Tom, just going back to your house, mm. um, uh, uh, how much more is, is going to be sort of researched for bits and bobs until you uh, finally say, I'm um, carrying on putting the floor down? So, the inside um, is going to carry, we're going to 
continue rebuilding it and everything. Um, and I've I've said to the Arkies that the garden's going to be free really till the end of spring, realistically, before we come in and start um, landscaping it. So they've got that chunk of time to come back and do whatever it is that they need to do. Um, so I'm keen to, one, find out what's going on, and two, equally, if it helps them work out um, any more info related to the Pictish Fort, then fantastic. Yeah, I'm more than happy for them to come in and dig around. As long as it's not that important that it stops progress with work. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure really where they're going to um, go with it, but I know they, they were keen on coming back and, and digging the garden. So, we'll and, and will you be videoing it on your YouTube yeah. channel? I probably will do. So the YouTube side of things, I've not done a huge amount recently. I did one about, I think, a couple of months ago about uh, detector settings. Um, but the, I'm, there's going to be more of that sort of stuff coming out because the podcast um, with the sort of demise of John Allen has changed into um, the Hidden uh, History Show. So Chris and I are still going to move on with that. Uh, it's going to have a slightly different theme. It's still going to be detecting base, but we're going to be looking at significant finds and that talk sort of thing and that's where that will be going with some interesting guests coming on um so yeah there's going to be more media and hopefully do some media about um whatever comes of that um and they'll definitely do some when it's finished and all the archies are there doing the dig up at the fort again we'll do some media up at the fort and then we'll obviously have them back at the house when they're all full of beer and tell us the things that they're not supposed to tell us so um that's the plan anyway um those who want to subscribe to tom's youtube channel here uh and or should we, just should we rub it a bit and make it big adrian um if you can't scan it on your phone or you're watching on your phone because a lot of people who watch sh the show watch it on their phone um google or go to youtube and type hidden history hunters detecting scotland and uh, you'll see tom on there and subscribe and he's got some great articles on there and reviews metal detectors which is something we must talk about tonight dave or metal detector mm. he loves all this um he's already gone dave, to sleep dave was interested first on the amount of current drawn um in field mode uh no i was joking um <clears throat> well, i'm already Tom. subscribed I am. I have been for a while um, with Tom. Um, Tom, uh, how long ago was it you went away with Joan Allen to the um, show and got the V80 prototype? Well, it was a beta um, test. So we've done a few trips over to Germany. That one was uh, EWA, which is the big international event. Um, so we were guests of Mind Lab for that one. I think it was either the end of February or early March last year. Um, yeah, it was. I think it was early March. Because that wasn't the one where we got lost in Germany, and that was a whole different video. Um, so my lab invited us over, but whilst we were there, we spent time with Dilek over at Nocta, um, and then obviously Quest at the time um, to go and look at the V80. Because the V80 was talked about back in 20, 2022 at the end of it, I think. So they'd handed they'd done some testing with the V80. Um, yeah, so that was I think the first X Terra back into the UK that I brought back. So that's. Uh, Carsten from that he's like the PR guy from Quest showing me the V80 um, and wanted me to take one back and just have a go with it and see what I think and um, from that I then sort of got roped into the testing program with them and going through various things with it for most of this uh, most of the year it's just passed actually so most of 2023 we were working on it um, up until sort of late October where I kind of left them to it with it so Yeah, and You're very fresh based and young on them pitches, Tom. I've aged a bit since then, haven't I? It's only not even a year ago. <clears throat> it's um, and we've obviously the V60 and the V80. It's it's they're interesting. There was a bit of an issue with sort of legality issues, I think, uh, patents and things initially, wasn't there? Mm, um, it's, it was banded about, but not really because that patent for the multi frequency side of things, I think that's where you're going with that. Um, had expired quite some time ago. So that's why everyone else, all the manufacturers got on the bandwagon with um, the multi-frequency stuff and they just had to call it their own thing. So Quest have called it uh, Hyper-Q um, and then you've got Noct to do it and everyone else and Garrett and people doing it. So um, 
but yeah, I was because you know my thoughts on the Q30 when that came out. I, you, you and I were testing them at the same time. I loved it. And Chris Still Woods, got it. Yeah. yeah, and we Chris and I sort of championed it a bit, and we did a lot of videos about them. And because a lot of people at that time weren't really aware about Quest, and they might have remembered them as the Technics and not the Technics, but the Technics. Um, so we sort of pushed them forward, and I didn't know what I'd what to expect, but really liked it. Um, and then went through all the models with Quest and Q60 and all the X ranges, and so I got given the V80 to try um, and to test. Um, and yeah, that's what I've been doing most of this year, along with other manufacturers, but working on that a bit with them up until sort of October, where I stepped in and left them to it. Yeah, it's it's a funny machine, Quest. They're so well built. They really are. Um, the shaft, the Q30, mm -hmm. I, I lent it to Dave and his son, but I think, Dave, you struggled with it a bit, didn't you? Yeah, he found it a bit too complicated, but I I, I think it's really easy to use. But Dave... Um, it was making <coughs> the wrong noises. It was squelching well, and beeping. I haven't told you, actually. There is a problem with it. There's a problem with the coil. Um, sorry, the coil I didn't tell you. you your back? Yeah. So that machine I've lent to quite a few people. So it's been knocked around and it's what a couple of years old now. And I think it might have just knocked itself silly or something, but it's the coil. There's a problem with the coil. Um, so not, not a big thing, but it has been proper put for its paces, but I just love the simplicity of it. And there's certain things like the shield cover that goes over the screen to protect mm -hmm. it and keep the sun off um that they, they do have an app that goes with it um where you can track your finds and post them on their forum it's a bit clunky but it's got potential but there's there's so many underdogs in the detecting world that don't get sort of enough respect because they can't market themselves so heavily and i think quest are one of them and i think the work you and chris did uh, they must have sold quite a few models um yeah. but i mean we're moving a lot of quests at the time um through joan allen and things um off kind of off the back of what chris and i were saying about it because i think people expect us to pull it apart and go this is awful and actually we were both like you were really surprised going the q30 is a really punchy for the price as well great little machine not so much with the v80 unfortunately um mm. right from the get-go with it um we've been sort of pedaling uphill with it and i would I think I was brought in a bit late with that. Their testers, not all, but some of their testers that they had were more interested in sort of YouTube clicks and that sort of thing and not really the finer art of testing. Mm. So they weren't going back to Quest and telling them what the problems were. Um, and we found problems in the hotel that night as soon as we took it out of the box. Um, and I was looking forward to it being good because it, however you look at it, it's an ugly looking machine. And I was hoping it was going to be fantastic. Um, and it, it had promise, but there was lots of things needed to change with it, a huge amount of things needed to change with it. And it was hard work going back and forth with the engineers. It was like daily, we were on chat and FaceTime, this sort of thing. Um, and I was I was like the, the only one, like the black sheep of all the testers going, no, you need to do this, 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 and that. Some things it did fix, um, some things it didn't. Um, and toward the end, I sort of got frustrated with Quest, and it was a bit of a a bit of a sour experience with them because I, I, from what I've known of Quest and how good they were and like their pinpoint is still to this day the best pinpoint out there, I think anyway. Uh, I'm not sure I didn't even knock one though, so I don't know. Um, so I kind of gave up with them in the end and sort of held my hands up and said, you're on your own, I'm not really doing any more with you. Um, but yeah, it's... I don't know if you remember, Adrian, you might remember the G80, the gold hunting machine that they were going to release two or three years ago that never came out. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. About that. Yeah. So if you look at the G80 control box, apart from the big sticky out bit where the battery housing was, and look at the V80 control box, you might see some similarities between the two. Mm. I, I, I find the V80 screen very intriguing. I haven't seen one in the flesh. Um, the rendered images, is it, have you got one there? Yeah. yeah. So if you turn it on, sorry, there'll be a load does of... it fold down nice, that? It does. It's probably... Yeah. The, this, the coil actually folds sideways as well. Um, so the screen, so the resolution, the style of the screen is probably one of the clearest ones. Just rub it and make it big. Especially on a sunny day. 
it's an absolute it, it's a really easy screen to see but one of the biggest things i said to them because it's such a small screen is there's too much going on in a small screen and we need to sort of minimize that and one of the recommendations that i said was let's have a detecting page so when you're detecting let's drop away most of the information and just have two or three of the important things on there that you can yeah. see um didn't happen um what would have been nice for them to put this inside the q30 q35 housing which works and the shaft's great and it looks i think quite nice whereas this thing looks a bit do you remember the sort of 1980s speak and spell yes yeah 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 um yeah that's why that's first impressions with it but the biggest issue i had with it um and they did do some work toward fixing it was tones the tones are awful and i mean really awful um and we went through quite a few iterations of trying to sort them out and they got better um i think by the end of it i just got a bit fed up with it and i was just because it wasn't moving like i'm used to with the other people i've worked with other manufacturers um mm. so i kind of in the end walked away and said great just uh, you're on your own I'm, i'll leave you to your, your testers i think i upset some of the testers as well um by saying that it's not about what you're finding we need to be testing this this and that because at one point we we're all on different uh, pro uh, all on different um programs on it so the latest update i might have had 16.2 someone else was on 15.1 and it just there was no cohesion so um so i wrote a test profile for them and said this is what we uh, will do so each day we've got a test and then we'll send it back and then it started to come together and lots of things did happen with it um there was a couple other issues with it but this this is a pre-production one so i'm not going to talk about those because they did iron those out um in, in their defense um but just following the people who are using it at the moment there's not a huge amount of praise going for it um one of the things that they pointed out is that the ones that the guys are using it now is it's suffering from emi a lot and being a bit unusable Tony K was actually said exactly the same in the chat a bit earlier on. Uh, he's got a lot of EMI issues, yeah. especially with bigger coils. So I didn't have any of that, but in their defence, I've not used it for the last three or four months, and there has been software updates since then. So I'm still running one of the test um, software updates on it. So I probably need to put the latest one on and go and see what's going on with it. But that was one of the things it was, was quite stable. But... Their direct comparison with it was they were aiming it at the as a competitor being the Nocta Legend. Um, and I did some videos for them and I was comparing them side by side. And in my opinion, um, they're not even in the same ballpark. The, and I mean, the Nocta Legend price for performance is probably one of the best detectors out there, I'd say. In, in its price. Value for money. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was a bit of a disappointment to me. It was. Hence why I didn't do any media on it. I couldn't at one point because I was doing all the testing and things. Um, so I just thought I'll just stick it in the corner and walk away and not really talk much about it. It's not terrible. It's just not what I thought it would be. And it's sort of sitting in that price range where it needs to be quite good. Um, mm. How much is it currently? I think their bundle package, it's up at like 749. Yeah. So that comes yeah. with... Uh, the Quest wire-free headphones and the big headphones. I love those headphones. They're great. I used to use them back when they were the Technics. I've probably got about six sets of them now, and they're fantastic. Initially, they weren't sure what they were going to use. With. They were going to use those sort of bone um, transmitting ones, and th but they yeah. had lag. They didn't use those. Um, so it comes with two coils, um, the Blizzard coil that's on it, and then there's one slightly narrower one that comes with it. And there is other options for the coils now. Weight-wise, it's, it's almost exactly the same weight as a Legend. It's really well balanced. Um, and the shaft's fantastic. And it's a round shaft. But when you extend it, um, you won't be able to see it on here, but there's a sort of groove that runs down the shaft so it doesn't swivel and pivot. And, um, it's all right, you're talking about shaft. Do you know what? Yeah. You've just said that. I do not understand why on the Manticore they haven't put a groove in their shaft. No, it's just... So this that shaft, drives me up the wall on the manticore. My this shaft is, spinning. It, it frustrates them because you're always you're there and you're trying to line it up when you get in the yeah. field. So this is exactly the same setup that was on the G80. Um, the only thing that's changed is this doesn't have the sticky out bit now and the, the sort of support. Um, and then it's just got a cam on it, but I can't use the cam because they're made of sort of chocolate box plastic and it, this one broke within about five seconds of getting it. Um, so... 
hopefully so that's Tony K would say if you use the code TC10 at spin a dish you'll get 10 percent off the uh the, the, well anything i presume but the uh the quest v80 mm. so i think i i spoke in length in, in, to them about it um and we went back and forth many times i think what they probably should have done is just put more time into the q30 and the q35 which and the x range which were fantastic selling machines this just seemed to me and the, the time frame a bit rushed um and I get they're a business and they're trying to get it out, but they're accessories that they do, so they're pinpointers and all the other bits. I love their stuff. Um, the new, I, I use this day and day. I've got a few of these now. Um, Is that the one I've got, Adrian? Yes. This, the only difference with this one, it might be the one that you've got, the magic holster one, so when you pull it out of the holster, it turns on, and when you put it back in, it turns itself off. No, I don't think I've got that. Um, but it's the same as the Max before. It just turns itself on and off with the holsters. But um, I've tested pretty much almost every pinpointer, apart from the new Nocta one, which I hear lots of good things about. That's definitely my favourite one, without a doubt. Mm. I've got to say, I thought that was a bag of crap. Even me telling you know, someone will use it. The Nocta I one. think that one, the Nocta is, wow, that's blown me away. Yeah. I think I've read a few people who've had the one you had, Dave, and there has been some quality issues after six months, ten months. I've I've heard, um, but I I was when they streamed that live quest, that new pinpoint, so not the one you've got, um, the one before the yeah. whole stuff. Um, and I think I was the first person to watch it on YouTube because I was I was at home and it just popped up, and mm -hmm. I looked at it. And I thought, oh my god, that looks fantastic! I'm going to buy one. Yeah, and and i didn't get one and then i wanted to get one then he got he got given one free yeah. and I joe, said, joe nolan like, give me one for for uh, review purposes and uh, you know uh, initially shane took it away it was great but it just false signals going off on its own you couldn't do what you want with it, it just in the back of the van for just in case purposes now was yeah that i think it no, no, it wasn't the Max. It's oh, the one it with the, it's the one with the um, iron signal, the green yes, and the red yeah, no. This was the same, but the one before it did as well. Yeah, yeah. That's a shame because normally, and I know when Detechnics, like the pre, the prior to Quest, that their pinpointers and stuff were great as well. Oh, that, yeah. The Detechnics one, I had one of there, and that was fabulous. Uh, it was. Apart from it, it just ended up dying on me. But that was absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh, and now that acupoint from the Octa Macro is just three of us had one in the field at the weekend. Shane's got the uh, beta version. Yeah. Me and Steve got the alpha version. When I had the beta version, I was struggling to turn it off, wasn't I, Adrian? It's yeah. so simple to use and, and it's so powerful. And as Adrian said, you have to turn the bloody um, thing down because the, the what's it called? Not discrimination. Sensitivity. 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 Down because it's just too darn sensitive. Yeah, You're I'd say. It's, I'd I'd say it's. Um, I th I think I wrote. Uh, yeah, I did. I wrote a review for Treasure Hunting Magazine on it. And with multi frequency machines now, you, you're you're picking up so many small things. Yeah. And like half of a one seven seven pellet that's been yeah. split because it's here, and you you want to know what it is. You you get you dig it out the clod. And you break it up and you run your machine over it and you go, yeah, it's in there, but you can't physically see it because it's covered in toot. And you get your pinpointer out and the the lower end pinpointers struggle mm -hmm. to find it. But the um, the uh, Nocta one, um, AccuPoint, it it literally, the, the sensitivity is crazy on it. It is a great pinpointer, but I must say I also like the uh, XP MI6. Um, which also Bluetooth to your headphones. Yeah. I think the Bluetooth link to your headphones, especially like if you're detecting and it's like two degrees, and it, you know, you've got a nice pair of headphones keeping your ears <laughs> warm. Um, really, really good. But the Quest, uh, Quest. Um, it, 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 as long as you don't buy a cheap one off Amazon, they're all pretty much, you know, you've got your Garrett's and, and yeah. stuff. Um, and so I the, know, sorry. 
the ones that are not Bluetooth to the headphone, the, the key thing for me, and I think probably a lot of other people, I'm pretty much deaf, and definitely if you've got your headphones on in a windy day, they need to be loud enough. And I, uh, the benchmark I used to test them all against was the MI4, because I thought that was a great pinpointer. Yeah. Uh, I've gone through a couple of them, but they just weren't, for me, they weren't loud enough. Um, so when I got the X Point and Max, the original one, the non Magic Holster one, um, loved it. It was really, really loud. You could hear it in the next field. Uh, with the discrimination on it and the LED for the discrimination as well. Loved that. Um, so every other one since I've sort of compared when I've tested it against the um, against the X Point and Max. Like the, I spent a bit of time with the Fisher F Pulse as well. Didn't yeah. really like that too much. But um, recently I've been using the Profine 40, uh, the Mind Lab one. That's quite set, almost too sensitive to a point. You're sort of knocking it back all the time because it. It gets a bit chirpy, but um, both really good pinpointers. So I think for me, having no one's sent me the um, the AccuPoint yet, so I've not tried. I'll probably have to buy one. But for me, the top two at the moment is the Quest X pointer and the ML40. I think. Talking of things that don't work, my lab Equinox headphones. Bag of shit. Is that the, I've used them about the five times, and the button just won't work anymore to turn them on. So uh, I've got yeah. the uh, send the unit and stuff. There's an issue with the. With the uh, with those um, like the 105s and the sorry not the 105s the ML80s and the 85s where the, where you push the we used to get loads of repairs in for them so you push the button there wasn't a huge amount of support in the button at the rear so the button ended up sort of pushing inside the casing of the headphone um, my 800 I've already got problems with the the, the power button on those yeah so, yeah it's not well, I've, I've just thrown I can't use them now I'll yeah. try taking them apart and ruin them but uh, as I say, I used to send the unit with my old Garrett headphones, and I yeah. was happy as Larry with them. You, I think you're one of quite a few having that issue with them. I know they did go on to change um, later models; they, they sort of reinforced it a little bit. But bizarrely enough, my 800 is doing the same. It's it, uh, sorry, my 900. I'm really struggling to mm. to get on and off. The 105s have been fine, apart from the wind noise. They've they've been spot on with the manticore, um, but mm. all of them, none of them compared to the Quest wire free ones the pros i think but these ones um i just think they're, they're comfortable they're fantastic i wish i could they are. hook these up to the mind lab stuff because they're some of the best headphones out there i think but and there'll be people I, going oh, no they're not they're awful but i i think they're fantastic i've got a set uh, that sid perry recommended and we made for us and he passed on to me are they converted are... quest ones no, no, no. These are August, you can convert. August headphones, Bluetooth ones. And uh, you can see a lot more rugged, yeah. better buttons and what have you. And mm. Sid Perry, uh, because obviously, what's the way? You know the speed when you, you use them and it, do, it picks it yeah. up a bit late on some Low ones. latency. Low latency. These, these ones are more or less bang on. So yeah. I've used them with the Mind Lab. Uh, Vanquish 540, and they would bob on with that. So the next time I'm out, I'm going to hook them up to see if they work with the uh, Nox 800. But Sid Perry uh, was a huge advocate of them. It's Look at me joining in Tech Talk. The, the Rutus Versa uses the same headphones as the Nox 600 and 800, but Rutus actually have redone the circuitry um, and improved the, 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 the speeds and it sinks and they're they're lovely to use um and i think it's just such a shame that with a detector sometimes the headphones for some manufacturers are a bit of an afterthought yeah um uh, and i think um quest properly uh, apart from their real value ones which are like yeah. a pair of sony ones from the 80s with yeah, foam awesome. yeah yeah um, they really have thought about because you don't see those headphones anywhere. And no. I don't know if they've made them bespoke for that machine, yeah. but it's not like a rebranded thing at all, is it? It's, no. I think I, I, I need to speak to them about that. Um, it could be something that they made themselves, but the legend headphones as well. So I've had that legend from one of the first ones when they came out. I've had no issues with those at all. No, they're um, really good. Yeah, legend talk, headphones are nice. Yeah, talking about um, legend. Um, I had a, before I came on here tonight. I had a message from uh, a guy you've probably never heard of him, but Fodder Phil. Yeah, 
So oh, yeah, then, he's, um, weird weird he, lad who he, he sits with little dummies in bed. He does. Yeah, he's, um, he's got a mannequin. So he said, give me a mention. So I said I would. But um, he was up here not too long ago, actually. He came up. He was working up this way. So he came out and did a bit of detecting with Steve and I, with said uh, Larry, the mannequin. Um, yeah. So <laughs> hello, Fods. Yes, hello, Fod. I hope you're well, mate. Happy New Year, and we'll catch up soon. Um, but, yeah, legend. I like that. Uh, I like see, see where all the about them, uh, August headphones, and I've put a link. Uh, it's an eBay link to the exact model that I've got. But in, inadvertently, while I was looking for that, Adrian, uh, August, they were bone conduction Bluetooth headphones. It's only £40. Pounds. Uh, and I'm just wondering how they would work if the well, August... Other ones work okay. What would the bone can good because the, how much um, would the pair of bone conductor be for the Nocta? Well, the, the Deus 2 bone conductive ones are lovely when it's hot and you're detecting mm -hmm. light in the summer. Um, and then you, I love the over ear headphones with the Deus one and Deus 2. It, to me, I just it's just right because I can talk to someone, I can hear what's going on around me so if any women are like coming up behind me are going to pounce on me which quite often happens not yeah, sure. um i can hear them coming but um literally but yeah i think quest headphones really really good and um, <laughs> oh yes idiot oh you are um, an awful but i am yeah. But I, I, it's, I'm glad Tom said that about quest headphones because they're my favorite ones out of yeah, all I, the headphones i've worn so I don't know if you you probably had them. You remember the ones when it was the Technics before it was Quest that you could put the DS1 puck into? Well, yes, I've seen people doing that. No, I didn't have them, but I have I seen had, them. I don't think I had them. That was how I sort of found out about them. And I was just like, these are amazing. And they, they were fantastic. Um, but I do like headphones that block out the ambient noise as well, because I often detect with Steve and Raymond, and it's nice not to be able to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, do you know what? Their bromance is something else. Absolutely it, brilliant. When we Raymond, got, uh, like, looking broke Raymond, isn't he? When we go off, him, so he gets so much grief from us. Um, and uh, Yeah. But yeah, he bit. doesn't really have a big social media platform, but everywhere we go now when people speak to me, they say, where's Raymond? Because I think Steve and I just throw our sort of videos of him and banter and stuff everyone sort of wants to know where raymond is now um and when we went to rcm everyone was chatting to him and it was brilliant but he's he's been he's just got back from holiday actually so i haven't seen him but he's a great character but those two when they've had a beer or two and were sat in the tents at night it's like watching a married couple argue with each other so <laughs> yeah i must admit when i drove you around in the gator at rodney kirk yeah. you and Steve were just ribbing into him and then swearing at him to hurry up. And uh, yeah, it's quite funny. I love all the new t shirt ranges that um, Steve yeah. created for him. His yeah. one yesterday, I, I absolutely want, want, want oh, one. Loads. That'll the day, in with a W and an anchor. The day, the day we left, um, we left a day early, I think, and Raymond was still there detecting. And he phoned us as we were driving back up to Scotland. He says, Oh, I've had to get the bus. He says that no one took me up in the buggy because we'd gone. He had to get the bus and the rest of them. He was uh, he was a bit put out, bless him, but he was oh, fine. So, found me. No. And Steve Barnett said uh, his headphone gripe is not having a charge percentage indicator. And it's true. Mm. It's true. It, it is, but if you use your machine enough, you sort of, I know, you learn how long they last. And yeah. as long as you're not jumping from four hertz to sort of, well, you know how long I've had that, um, I've that of the knocks, well over a year now, and I've not actually charged the uh, the sender thing. I've not charged that at all yet. Yeah, I might have to get it out the back and charge it. The the thing, at least with the Manticore, that you know without a shadow of a doubt that the headphones are going to outlast the Manticore. So, um, yes, there's, there's no worry there. But mm. the uh, the X pointer and the X the MI4 and 6 the same. It's like, char I seem to charge it about four times a year. That's that's about it. They last so long. We've not yeah. charged the first AccuPoint, and Shane goes out twice a week normally. We've not charged that yet, the first one. Yeah. I think not to overspect the battery in the AccuPoint, because the first AccuPoint I got, I charged when I got it, 
yeah. and I still haven't charged it. And I used it for about 50 hours and detecting, not physically pinpointing for 50 hours, because that'd be quite sad. Um, and then I gave it to my son who uses it and he's lazy, so he probably hasn't charged it yet. And that was working the other week. I mean, it is it is crazy. Uh, actually, I'd, I think they said 30 hours. No, 25 hours, Dave, on the active point, I think. Um, which is a long time. A lot. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll have to get one. Um, I need to try this out because I've not heard a bad word about it. So. No, I think yeah. there's little things like, you know, where you unscrew the cap but to yeah. take your batteries out or charge it. That it the, the, the downside of most pinpointers is it's hard to thread it on and it gets muddy and that. Yeah. The AccuPoint, it literally just goes like that. It's a really... T- Plus, found it. Done a little trump on a bent over then, sorry. <laughs> Live on air. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. There we are. So, I seem to always lower the tone when I come on this show, don't I? Yeah. No, we do that ourselves, Tom. You, you're actually <laughs> sending it to a higher tone. I'm not Dave, sure. what did you have for tea? I exist. What did you have for tea? Uh, well, I don't like pizza. No, I don't. I like garlic bread with cheese. So I had garlic bread with cheese with pizza toppings, but not that tomato sauce, quite trappery. Try it, man. It's future. So it was a pizza, but it was a garlic bread with cheese because I don't have the pizza sauce. I have the garlic sauce instead. So it was a pizza without the tomato sauce? Yeah, but with garlic sauce instead. Yeah. Garlic bread. Yeah. Okay. Meat meat feast, but garlic bread base. Uh, no. The battery, it says... Uh, sorry, um, uh, someone put in the chat, 25 hours. Doesn't yeah, say. Dirt Diggers UK. Um, hiya. Um, oh, there's quite a few people in the chat. Um, we should say hello. Uh, hi, Nick Berry. Uh, Nick, I messaged you Happy New Year after you messaged me. Uh, over a week ago, um, have, Tom, we, had any, have we had any messages off uh, Donna Martin lately? Yes, there was one, but I've got to gone. send it to you. Okay. Yeah, um, yes, um, yes, uh, Dave, you having flatulence problems is totally sorry. Oh, sorry, Philip Wills, Adrian, did. You see that I received the pinpointer. Thanks. Yes, he's got the Profine 40 that he won at Christmas. Fantastic. Um, and we've just got the Garrett 400i. The verse has been delivered. So, yeah. Kevin Allen, AccuPoint. Yeah, the AccuPoint. And what I like as well, sorry, you get a spare tip and you also get a spare rubber seal and you get a lanyard mm-hmm. and your sheath and something else but it all works it, it's all tickety boo very good bit of kit very very mm-hmm. good bit of kit no i'll have to have a look at it um because of all the metal detecting kits i've used and i've used you know a bit i'm not very good at it but i've used a lot of kit i think it's probably my favorite bit of anything kit wise from machine down to socks that i've used so talking about socks I've just got um, what they made from merino wool socks. Oh my god, that revolutionizes cold feet. All the fancy things. Adrian, stuff. write it down. Merino. Now, I've, I've got seal skin. Have you heard of yeah, seal, I've skin? Got seal skin? Yeah, as well. But just for general warmth, I don't, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a new thing that I've just been uh, introduced to. It's fantastic. But so just to go back to the um because I get I've I had so many questions over the last year about the V80 and I've not really been able to answer it. My overall round it up opinion of it. And I always do like the litmus test of would I one spend my own money on it, two, would I recommend it to a friend? Um and as much as it pains me because I love quest stuff, the answer to both of them is gonna be no. Um and I'm hoping that sort of answers the millions and millions of messages I've had about the V80. Um, I don't think it's quite there yet. But have you used the latest one rather than the? Not def- in their no. defense, I haven't used the latest one. But just so what? What made you? Was it the what? What? 
aspect? Was it the display? Was it the ergonomics? I'm not really a display person anyway, so that's not an issue because I'm sort of a tones person, and that's where the biggest issue was was the tones. Um, mainly, so I, we talked about, I don't think they quite understood what the threshold was all about. So we talked about changing the threshold or removing it because it was terrible. Um, the iron tone was so sort of choppy and staticky. So with a good machine, the Nocturne, Mind Lab, Deus, you, you can sort of read the land by what you're hearing with the iron. Now, this isn't for everyone because I know a lot of people don't want to hear the iron following in the background, but I do, especially on Roman sites, because you know when you're getting into somewhere good because you start to hear the iron chirping. Um, the iron tones were awful. The tones all round were awful. Um, and they did try, but it just, it just wasn't for me. And it, so this is, again, it's a personal opinion. Um, and along with lots of other things that just really... It's VDI and it was all over the place, but that said, so is the Xterra. Um, the ferret indicator was just crazy. Um, it just as a package, it just wasn't there for me, and I we it was evolved and evolved. And I just thought at the end that enough's enough, and I'll leave you to it. But so, mm. for those that have asked me lots and lots over the last year, um, that's my answer is no, I wouldn't buy one. So, yeah, so if, if, if someone was to ask you now, Tom. I've got lots of money. I want to buy a machine. What would you recommend? What would be your number one recommendation? Oh, you can um, say it now because you're not tied to any other companies. Well, before I answer that, the good thing about when I was with John Allen as well, right from the get go, because I was doing all the blogs and things myself, and I said I, I need to be honest about what I'm saying and give them their due all the way through for whatever backlash they let me be honest about it. So that was good. Um, if I had to pick, I don't, oh, you have to turn this to Adrian as well in a minute. Um, B5. I would say, and I've got everything now, even above, if it was a, the only machine I had, even above the Manticore and, the, and like the Deus 2 or something like that, I think just for one I enjoy the most would be the Equinox 900. And I'm not saying they outperform the other ones, that's just for the one personally I enjoy the most um, because it does everything but without all the faff and the chirpiness and so uh, yeah if i had to stick with one that or the legend oh, i don't know yeah the 900 i like that i like that he's turned that question around so which one i'd enjoy the most and i agree because i prefer answering the question on which one i yeah. prefer using the most yeah. so for me um i'd say best value for money is the Nocta legend at the yeah. moment um but for me i love using the rootless versa um and there's been some bad press about it, but I'm not on social media he media heavily. And that's one of the reasons I'm not, because I, if I have a metal detector, I go out, I don't listen to all these idiots saying about putting it in super gold mode, change yeah. all the settings. Um, Rootless Versa, Legend, and the Deus 2, and the Deus 1, but I'll say the Deus 2. We, we only wanted one machine, not eight, major. If it was one, if it was one at the moment, at the moment, I'd say Rootless Versa, Predominantly because it's a small brand in Poland. Eric uh, and his wife um, uh, uh, struggle, and they're in the, they're in the, they're helping out at the moment in a war. They got a war next door, and I know personally that they're helping out with that. They're a very small company. They had the Root Salt Seventy One, which helped me find a medieval gold ring, which sold at auction in London for nine and a half thousand pounds last year. You know. Um, and it, it's a cracking machine, and they aren't the best looking machines, but I really enjoy using that. But the legend, I still, my son uses the legend, and he smashed me the other day against the Manticore. Um, yeah. And we're in the same field. I know a lot of it's luck, but it's, it, you can go and pick up a Quest Q30 tomorrow, and you'll enjoy yourself metal detecting. Mm -hmm. um, on the back of everything you'd said about the routers, Adrian, James Barnes uh, picked one up this week. I sent you a picture of it, and he's absolutely loving it. Yeah, but they, they won't be the best detector out there because they're a little company in Poland who haven't got a marketing budget. They haven't got 500 YouTubers who say, thanks for sending me a detector. Oh, yeah, this is great. Oh, yeah, I've just found a gold noble. Um they're, they're, they're bought by people. The, the engineering behind Rutus machines is totally different to your big brands. So, you know, what detector can you see the EMI on? You can physically see a graph with it on. It's it's a bit quirky, some of the things, 
Um, but for it's good, seven hundred quid. It's I enjoy it. Downside, you got to pay for the headphones, which are one hundred and twenty quid, one hundred and fifteen quid. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm English. We 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 like being the underdog. We like seeing the underdogs win, uh, even though it's made in Poland. Um, <laughs> and, and C Scope, I'd love them next year or this year to come out with a new machine, a totally new machine. And I'd love everyone in the UK to adopt it and buy it and swarm all over it, but maybe not. But not to keep bashing stuff out like there's no tomorrow and it's all good stuff. So it's all good for us in the hobby because 10 you years like ago... You bashing it out though, don't you? I love bashing it out. But 10 years ago, we, we were restricted to, a, well, five years ago even, certain brands mm -hmm. that were reliable and good. Now... We've got a handful, and it is complicated for people. It really is complicated. I'd just I, say I, it don't definitely spend too much. doesn't help with um, like YouTubers, and I know I'm one of them, but I've been lucky enough that I can just be honest. About, I don't, I'm not taking backhanders from anyone saying anything. So it doesn't help with people saying this is the best thing ever because they're being paid to do that. But talking about looking forward to new machines coming out, I can't say much about it, but I'm just about to embark on a project with another one of the manufacturers who haven't done anything for a while um, with a new machine. So there could be something else relatively exciting coming out. Dr. Tomotech. Tomotech. I don't know if you saw the video I did about the Dr. Otech pinpointer that some people loved and others got the back up. Um, but I think at the end of it, I said you have more luck finding whatever it is you're looking for, blindfolded wearing oven gloves or something like that. Um yeah, some people yeah. weren't too chuffed about that. I think it was mainly the people who were selling the Doctor O Tech pinpointers, but yeah, mm. yeah. Stick stick with the good brands. It's a bit I, like buying cereal, isn't it? You know, yeah. you, you you know what you know, and you buy what you buy. You don't as soon as you try out one that's different, it, it never really works out. Stick with wheat a bit, corn flakes. And... Dominic Tomchik uh, says he has a couple of YouTube guys with uh, the who use the Eurotis. And he's been showed how it works, what have you. And he's definitely thinking of buying one himself now. Mm. And, and, and on the routers first, though, there is a certain man in America uh, or people who um, have had issues with it. Um, I won't go into detail because I don't know them personally. But all I'll say is in England, we have different soil. We don't have lumps of iron that big every 10 foot. We have iron infested ground. Mm -hmm. We don't rely on air tests and we don't rely on a plank of wood with a big nail next to it and a dime. We actually go out and metal detect. And Tom is a prime example of a good field tester because when he does his videos, he's actually in a field detecting. Um, and that's what it's all about in the hobby. It's not until you get out there and go in the field. Um, that's when you start finding stuff and understanding your machine. It's not the same man that got a direct reply from Mark Corey from Mine Lab, any chance, is it? Uh, I don't know, but it, James Barnes has just put something which might... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, but you just got to be so careful because uh, uh, the, the guy in America was slating the Versa. Why is he field testing one when you can't even buy him in America? Yeah. he's. Um... But you're right, because... And this is the thing with testing new machines. Depending where they're going to be released, they have to be tested in those areas and those places around the world by people who are actually testing them and not just doing blooming air tests and test beds. You need to be out there looking for consistency and, and finding, even down to the actual physical faults with machines, because until you've used it for six months, you don't know which bit's going to fall off or where the problems are. Six months, I agree, yeah. Tom. Totally yeah. agree. Not six hours. <clears throat> I did also, a bit they, um, and that sort of to the to answer some other questions because people were getting these manticles and 900s and ds 2s and they were using them these youtubers for two two days and then releasing their latest sort of super duper setting video that this will find everything and i was just like and leave it is everyone asked me what settings to use and i'm like pretty much factory settings with a few tweaks to the conditions and that is it um, and the issue with a lot of things is, is people putting these YouTube settings in and then not being able to find anything with it. There's a guy actually yeah. I mentioned in the video, he messaged me and he, he goes, oh, I'm just, oh, you said the 900 was good. I said, it's great. He said, I'm having all these problems. So he, he 
did a little video of him going through his settings, and I don't know whose settings that he'd followed from YouTube. He said, what do I do? I said, factory reset it. And he did. And I gave him a couple of little tweaks, and he was off, and he was happy. Um, and I think that puts a lot of people off machines. They go in there with these super-duper settings and mess it all up. The engineers, funnily enough, know what they're doing when they put the presets into the machines. Yeah, I think so. they'd have they they wouldn't still be working for the big companies if they sent out a general program which didn't work, would they? Yeah. Um, Pomsey, hi mate, hope you're doing well. Um, he's still on factory settings, almost one year in with his yeah. Manticore. Um, I was I was supposed to be trialing uh, TC's uh, Versa up at the the rally that you came up to. Oh no no, you came up to the first rally where up yeah. at uh, the Ministry <laughs> Act. The second one that was on, uh, he was supposed to be, well, he, he brought it up, but then went home because it started raining because he's made of sugar. <clears throat> uh, Stephen A. Wilson asks, uh, what is the best, I presume, can I ask, please, Legend Deus 1 or Nox 900? Ooh. Where'd you detect, Beach? Yeah. Uh, up north, down south. How old are you? Have you got a back problem? Um, the Deus is 13 years old this year, 14 years old this year, Deus one. Um, Legends, two years old. Knox is, what, a year old? Um, Dominic Tomczyk yeah. says that Verse have got a new update. And Tony uh, is right. It wasn't just rain. It was biblical. Uh <laughs> Eagle Eye DJI says Deus one with the HF coil. Yeah, yeah. He and he, he boats uh, south down south many fields. Epic combination. Yeah. Deus one with that HF coil was my go-to for a long, long time. Yeah, it smashes stuff. Yeah, and yeah. he that's my uh, detecting buddy who's put that, and that's because uh, in the last six months I've been out with a multitude of machines and. Yeah consistency he does know the machine to be fair um he has done really really well he pulled up six romans uh behind me uh, i won't say what machine i was using but it was more than twice the price of an old deus one um and uh yeah it's Deus still got it still got it in it well Anything listen to... we could chat all night but it's 25 to oh. 10. <gasps> and uh, all those good people want to go to bed and Adrian stays up till silly o'clock doing peculiar things uh, a quick jump onto the solo layout uh, don't forget to scan that QR code to get to the Hidden History Hunters Detecting Scotland YouTube channel uh, that's also the same name on Facebook, Facebook. Instagram all the other things. and your blog is at the same again the blog uh, yeah, it'll, it'll all come back to it. Hidden History Hunters will bring you back to everything. Brilliant. Because the the uh, the blog is well worth looking at. As I said, the Treasure Trove article that um, he kindly gave us to republish in ArcMD Mag. Um, and and I, I take it that would totally need rewriting or updating now, will it, Tom, that article? Uh, it's not that, even though it's, it's an older article now, I mean, it has slightly improved up here, but it's not far off the mark, to be honest. Um, mm. I think we experience the same sort of problems that you guys are with the PAS. Um, mm. just, uh, I think it's down to the popularity of, of the, the hobby now. It's just so yeah. many people doing it puts a strain on it all as well, which doesn't help. But yeah, that's a different, that's for a different topic. I've so, gone about that whole Yeah, time. that is a good topic to show, actually. Um, yeah. He was just asked that. Derek Sherwin, the new legend update. Any idea when that's out? Anybody? Oh, the what? New legend I... update. Yeah, so the beast mode, or as I told Dilek to call it, the depth mode or something, because beast sounds a bit quest coil turbo kind of thing. Um, it? Yeah, the bliss, I reckon. Till V5. I reckon as soon as another manufacturer brings out a new machine or an update, quest. Uh, Nocturne will be out there smashing it. Just quickly, Nick Berry, sorry, I we did get I the on our voicemail system, I did get your message. I haven't sent it to Dave. I won't explain how funny it is, but Dave, I'll send it to you. Um if you want to leave us a message, bigdetectingshow.com, you can leave us a voice message. Don't have to put your email address. Along with anything. Nick, along with Rob Random, along with Donna and Chris yes. Langston's Barra Breath recipe. Yes. 
Um, so yes, but thank you ever so much tonight, Tom. Really, really good having you. Yes, on really day. enjoyed it, Tom. Thank you. It's gone ever so quick. Uh, don't forget, look on the Big Detecting Show. Join us on the Facebook group. Uh, send over your finds. You know, we, we love looking at stuff like that. If you want to come on the show, please contact me by any of any means necessary. Um, I'm going to start booking people on for the coming weeks, uh, over the next week anyway. Uh, Tom, pleasure as ever, um, and we'll speak to you soon, no doubt. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, nice. Adrian, love you lots like jelly tots. I'd say that to all the viewers, but it'd be kind of weird. Do it anyway. But thanks anyway. Yeah. Love you lots like jelly tots. <laughs> and we will see you all next week at 8 p.m. on The Big Detective Show. Good night, everyone. Bye. See you, Tom. Cheers, guys.